Um, ladies, thank you for joining us this morning. Cappuccino Club discussion, roundtable discussion. I want to thank all of you for being brave enough to be here. Our topic this morning, of course, is the discussion around entitlement and privilege, which is such a sensitive topic in South Africa at the moment, but something we have to talk about. And with Cappuccino Club really talking about inspiring change through conversations, that's really what we're hoping for. We're really hoping that we can have a discussion that will allow people to question some of the things that they thought was absolutely okay. And we really are going to just have a conversation this morning. So thank you for joining us. I am going to ask us that we just um, try and have have a good conversation, have a discussion, and we'll we'll get there. Now, privilege and entitlement. I know that if you um, any of you saw the video I posted on our group about privilege, privilege is a very it could be a very neutral word. You know, we talk about um, a tiny client privilege, uh, but it could also be a very positive word, like I'm privileged to be here today. But in South Africa at the moment, it has such a negative connotation. You know, when we talk about privilege, we usually couple it with the word, the whole concept of entitlement. Um, if you had to define this word, because Mandisa, I think even your, um, your video that you posted was about how do we define this thing. So if we had to define the concept of privilege to a five-year-old, what would your definition be? I mean, how would you take this <coughs> terribly complicated concept and then bring it down to the understanding of a five-year-old? What would you say? I think for me, privilege is having an advantage without ever doing anything. On, on your own like it's 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 something that y you as an entity as an individual have no control over but you have an advantage because of however life all the rules in that particular place are set up okay yeah. okay so it's having an advantage anybody else want to just take a step at the definition i wouldn't necessarily say it's not having any control over it because Going to a private school is definitely a privilege, and you do have control over which school you choose to go to. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't necessarily say you would have no control over the privilege, but I was, I guess. I was on on the basis of being um, white. Yeah, people don't people don't oh, choose to be white. white. Yeah, you're born white, mm -hmm. and it's 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 a privilege yeah, because, yeah. and that's why I, I put it in the context of the system that you're born into because. If you are white and the system works for you, it's a white system, then you automatically are assimilated to the system that was designed naturally for yeah. you. Yeah. I think maybe for me, um, and, I, and this, I think that's why I actually said on, on, on my video clip that we have to define that. But there's various definitions of entitlement and mm -hmm. religion, and there's one that's in the Bill of Rights. So do you then allow the government? policy to define what the title is or do you set that definition as a mom in yes. your own home and say I understand what the Bill of Rights says but in my home this is what rights are and this is what sorry privileges are and this is what entitlement is. Yeah. But if you look at the basics in terms of entitlement, entitlement it's something that it's it's like a right. Mm -hmm. You know, like housing, like life and then uh, and a privilege would be something that it's not, you've got to earn that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it can't be taken away from you mm -hmm. at any point in time. But then, when I looked at that, it just sparked other conversations. Mm -hmm. You know, if you look at children nowadays, their first introduction to technology might be at school mm -hmm. because there's a whole drive around using technology to educate these kids. So then they grow up with this thinking that having a mobile device is an entitlement. Yeah. And not a privilege. Yeah. But as a mom at home, you're saying that it's, you've got to earn having a phone and I can take it away from you. Mm -hmm. But then if you're a traveling mom that's never at home, you need your kids to have a phone to communicate with them. So it just gets very complicated. Yeah, it, it does actually <laughs> get extremely complicated the more voices you put into the discussion mm -hmm. because it's really everybody has started to define privilege and entitlement differently. Yes. You know, um, Basic for me, a basic definition of privilege, if I have to explain it to, to my 10 year old son, would be something along the lines of it's a special conversation, you know, it's a special thing that you're trying to do and trying to to engage in 
that you feel because of who you are, you are allowed that. You know, um, I think for me, privilege is, privilege is a more, almost a more neutral word than entitlement. Entitlement mm. to me is just, it's ah, oh, I hear that word, it just mm. like runs me up the wrong way. Mm. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a word that I just feel automatically in my space has this negative connotation. Mm. I think privilege also is not just, a, it's not a, a neutral word, it just depends on your perspective and your background and where you're looking at it from. Yeah. I mean, everybody obviously has, it's quite a loaded word. Yes. In the way, yes, it depends on your experiences, and you come with that. Because if I'm looking at us, we're a different generation from you guys, and for mm -hmm. me, it's a different thing altogether. Mm -hmm. um, what privilege means to you, and what privilege has, uh, what I understand privilege from my experience, is completely different. Yeah. So I don't think we're ever going to find a complete and concise definition of it as you know we yeah. like to. Yeah. And it's never going to be a conversation that ends. Yeah, and the generation will carry on and continue, yeah. but we just need to unlearn it to make it yeah. more, um, less of a bad word. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So at, at least work through the negativities yes. so yeah. we understand why it's causing that. I think Lynn um, Hendricks from the Cappuccino Club, she posted something really interesting and her um, comment was that privilege isn't about the things you were given, it's about the things you were never subjected to. So that brings in that whole idea of things you can't control. It's it's mm -hmm. something you've never been subjected mm -hmm. to. So it's not something that you that you consciously do. I mean, mm -hmm. I can't think there's a lot of my friends um, who, if I look at them, I can't consciously think that they would do things to hurt me or mm -hmm. things to exclude me or things to not make me feel comfortable. But it's just they've never been subjected to racism, they've never been subjected to um, discrimination, they've never been subjected to that kind of very kind of bias. Mm -hmm. And and so they And I think also what makes it very com complicated or very complex it's that it talks to one's emotions mm -hmm. and connects yeah. to your heart. Yeah. So there you can't apply black and white. Yeah. Yeah. You know when there's people's emotions, people's livelihoods are at stake. You can't apply a black and white approach. Mm -hmm. how you define something or, or to how you look at things and that's why it becomes so like you said there's culture that comes in there there's values that comes in there there's religion that comes in there and then it becomes this whole big yeah. elephant that's yeah. before you you know yeah. and again if you look at generations how we see things yeah. and how a technical yeah. see things it's yeah. completely different yeah. and who says who's right and yeah. who says yeah. Yeah. So, so I, th I think it brings us a very, it brings us to a very important question. You know, our perspectives of entitlement and privilege is changing. Yeah. I mean, I, I think that's that's really what we're looking at. And there's a lot of things that influence that change. Mm -hmm. What would you, ladies, say is is one of the things that start to influence this whole perspective? You know, or the change of your understanding of entitlement and and and, and uh, privilege. What are, what are some of the factors that could change that? For us as older ladies, we say mature ladies, what, what, are the, what are the things yeah, that have changed? That's experience. Yeah. I, I was <laughs> actually going to say that. I think it's life experiences, mm -hmm. you know, and you, you start seeing things from a different lens than you would have seen them at that time. You know, things happen and they start shaping the way you think. Mm -hmm. Yes, and your understanding about things. But then how do I take that and relay that to my daughter who's 21 years old in a way that she understands. Because sometimes I think what is perceived as them being rebellious is not being rebellious. Yes. It's just that we completely different Genesis. Yes, generations. Mm -hmm. generations. So it might be perceived as that this child is just being rebellious. Yeah. But they're not. Yeah. And it just takes me for me yeah. to actually put myself in her space. Yeah. And and understand that. Yeah. And then maybe try to find some common ground. So, so for, for you all, uh, have you found that there are things that are already starting to influence or change your perspective of entitlement and privilege? I think uh, privilege also gives you sort of a platform to do good in a situation. Mm -hmm. um, and I always like to kind of talk about real life examples. So I used to work for an NGO called Rape Crisis. And one morning I was sitting in my car, normally I'd be quite early because my mom would say do CT, so I drop her off and then get to work and then I have to wait for the secretary to open up. 
and the right in front of me was this truck with um, boulders in it. And I'm sitting and I see this girl walking past and what happens is these guys start to harass her and call names and this one guy literally gets out and now follows her and he's kind of in a space and um, and I sat there and I thought okay I'm, am I going to now I have the opportunity to kind of do something or am I just gonna sit and be mm -hmm. like this is normal this is okay um, or am I actually gonna use my voice for this young lady um, and she walks down the street and um, this guy walks back and I thought no you know what I need to now I have the privilege or at least the, the platform to actually do something and I got out of my car and I actually went to go challenge that guy and I said you know what this girl um, and many other girls who are in a community face this harassment every day you think that you could get out of this truck now and be in a space she's just wanting to walk to work or go to school mm -hmm. and uh, I mean you can't do this and I don't know where I got the the Courage, Courage yes. from, but I just thought I need to do this. I work in this space. I mean, we in this organization, we fight for women's rights. We fight for women to be heard. We a voice of the voiceless, and um, yeah. So I think we, in terms of privilege or, or having a voice, you need to kind of use it if it's going to be for the good and the benefit of others. Mm. I think that's a beautiful. That's that yeah. such a good point. That's the yeah, That's a beautiful mm. point because it, it just reminds me that. Um, it's the people who have the power who can change the system, yeah. you know, um, and it's not to the people that are less or disadvantaged who need to fight for themselves, yes. you know, so the fact that I am straight means that I need to actually have a voice for homosexual people, yeah. you mm -hmm. know, because it's not homosexual people who are supposed to tell me that they want gender neutral toilets because when it comes from them it feels like a fight but when it comes mm -hmm. from me I have nothing to lose mm -hmm. you know I, I don't have to bear the brunt of being labeled I don't have to bear the brunt of being um, ostracized by anyone mm -hmm. because I already fit in a culture mm -hmm. that accepts straight people so if I can use that privilege because that's also a privilege Absolutely. the fact that I'm straight and I identify with how I was born is a privilege because that's how the world works so I should use that for people that can't do that I think I think that's such an important yeah. point you know. I mean in all the discussions that I've been having all the research that I've been doing I've really not been able to stumble across that that you know it's if you find yourself in a situation of privilege and again I talk about all the amazing people I know who find themselves in a situation of privilege and they you know they almost feel we've always guilted them into the fact that you know you are from this racial group or you're from this economic class I and mean, we we guilt them into to feeling embarrassed or ashamed about their privilege you know? and i think there's an element of that that that's okay but it's very important that people who find themselves in a position of privilege understand that you then are almost obligated to lead the charge on change it's not it's not the people who are suffering from the effects of your privilege or entitlement to should be looking at that. True. But if you listen to what, what you what you said is that it, it didn't act, it didn't act, it didn't happen instantly. Yeah. Mm. So you still sat there and you yeah. had this internal dialogue. Yeah. You know, yeah should yeah. I get up? Should I not get up? And yeah. it and and I guess that's why we're human. True. You know, it's as much as it's a privilege, but you still have this dialogue. Yeah. You're sitting there and yeah. you're yeah. wanting yeah. to to do do I have to go or do I not go? Yeah. And if I go, how am I going to say this? Yeah. Am I not going to go because I don't feel safe yes. mm -hmm. addressing this guy? Mm -hmm. you know? and, I have, and, I, and I just, I was just thinking of something that one of the guys said. I sat in a group of students on Thursday, and one of the guys' boys said that when we grow up as young men, we don't get asked, um, do you have a girlfriend? We get asked, how many girlfriends do you have? Sure. Yeah. Now you know maybe that guy that went up to her yeah. mm -hmm. grew up in a setup like mm -hmm. that where mm -hmm. it's okay to do that. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. you're, you're a guy. It's a yeah. guy thing to do that. Yeah. Yeah. And he did not see anything wrong. Yeah. You but know? for for me the, the girl's body language showed me that she was she was yes, not comfortable. Yes. Yeah. And even when a girl walked off, I thought she would never know that, that day. 
I stood up to those guys. I mean, mm. it was probably seen of them. Yeah. But for me, it was just that I needed for them to see that it was not okay. Yeah. So even, and, and it wasn't one man that I could like sort of influence those men's oh, yes. mindset. Yes. And yes. that was important for me. So that girl may never know, but I'm hoping that the same men <laughs> today will yeah. not even like that. And know that that is not okay. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that, sorry, it brings me to another question, and that is, in order to to come from a privileged background, because you're so right. As we sit here, we're having this discussion, but we all have a level of privilege and entitlement. You know, it's like we all have that little bit of narcissism in us. You know, yes. we all plagued by this. And I think as situations arise where we are the entitled and we are the privileged, we have to speak up. But it does require for you to be brave. Yes. It requires a huge, a huge sense of bravado. You really do have to be brave. And here's the second thing coming from Shana's story. It, it may or may not be appreciated. Mm -hmm. People may or may not know. Mm -hmm. I know that those group of guys, because it's so inherent in them to yes. do that behavior, yes. may not necessarily change tomorrow. But the next time they are asking someone, they remember yes. the crazy lady mm -hmm. <laughs> that was yes. in the street that day that yes. told us. And maybe that changes. And that's the whole thing about the conversations that inspire yes. change. True. And I feel like the, the thing, up, what would have even been better in that situation was if a man had done it. Had done it. Yes. Mm. Because there was probably men that saw that mm. and men believe men. You know, mm. like it's just it's just who they are. Like a man will respect another man. When they see a woman, it's almost like, oh yeah, she's going to preach. But I, I think it also goes back to what you said because um, I think if it was a man that stood up for a woman, Yes, no, 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 what she did is to trigger that thought where yes. one of the men that are sitting in that chat are going to think about it, even when they see a girl being harassed in the future, they're going to say, um, actually, that day, that girl actually felt uncomfortable, yeah. and yeah. this crazy lady came <laughs> and, yeah. and called and called him out. Yeah. Maybe I should do something. Yeah. Yeah. You you realize that that behavior is wrong. Yeah. yeah. You know what? I think we should start a culture of speaking up. Yeah. yeah. I think that's where we're lacking. Yeah. And we've got this culture of silence, yes. and yeah. we don't realize that when we when we silent, we are actually condoning. The action. Yeah, yeah. So our, our inaction is doing us a disservice yeah. um, as women. And I think if we become more vocal, um, then perhaps we're giving other women permission mm -hmm. to speak. Yeah. Just it also comes back to we are mobilized by incidents. Mm -hmm. You know, we do have a voice. We speak out. The, the tendency with women, and I, it's not anybody's fault. It's just yeah, the way life is. Is that we mobilize ourselves when there's an issue. Yeah. Mm. For example, uh, you name it, if we go back mm. to that, you know, it sparked a whole conversation yes. mm. and there was action, but it should have happened before that, not yes. before. because of something. Mm. You did something because of mm. an incident. Mm. Mm. Whereas, you know, you yeah. have to be constantly working on this. If we talk about being vocal, it can get so wrong. Yes. Mm. You know, imagine telling a 20 year old or 15 year old you need to get vocal. You know, yeah. sometimes it just goes wrong. Yeah. Um, yeah. I also think that coupled with being vocal, we need to start maybe understanding why people do yeah. what they do. Mm -hmm. You know, because I, I, I sit with a group of teenagers every Wednesday, and the stuff that I hear, I go home and I cry sometimes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, those kids are, there's so much that has happened in their lives that has formed, the one will stand and say, I don't forgive. Yeah. Or the one will say, I would lie straight in your face. Yeah. And I will go to court and I will lie. And I don't feel sorry about that. Yeah. And I said, I think. <laughs> but then as we spend more Wednesdays together, there is so much yeah. that has happened. Yeah. The one says to me, they lost, he lost his mom at six years old and the dad at seven years old. Yes. And his family left him. That's why he struggles with forgiveness. Now, I would have made an assumption that 
this child is whatever. Yeah. Because I didn't know what happened. Yeah. And I said to him, I'm going to take you a lifetime. But that's how conversations are so empowering. Yeah. Yeah. You know, when we, when we open ourselves to listening to other people's experiences and stories, yes. um, then we understand. But I think sometimes we also close ourselves off or we have these preconceived ideas yes. of, of who people are and then mm -hmm. coming yeah. out. Yeah. 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 But yeah. I think yeah. it comes yeah. back to what Tashina is saying and what we are all saying is that we need to start getting to the point where we are initiating the change yeah. and we are not waiting for the incident we're actually initiating the change and i think that is why that is really what we're trying to do and i think what we're succeeding at the cappuccino club is to say let's have the conversations that will inspire the church let's start talking about this issue of entitlement and privilege now in the context of how it affects us as women as well as how it affects us in terms of class, race, you know, gender, and, you know, because for me right now, we put a lot of effort into the whole, um, you know, focusing on the apartheid and discrimination and bias that went along racial lines. And then we as women found ourselves left behind. Mm -hmm. I'm asking us to start raising the discussion around entitlement and privilege already putting the issue of um, our gender on the table and saying we are feeling discriminated against, we are feeling that you are more privileged, we are feeling that you are more entitled as women, you know, we, we are not going to stand for that, we are actually going to start having these conversations. So I think it becomes important for us. Um, have have any of you personally experienced a level of privilege or entitlement that acted against you and 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 maybe just talk to us about an example of that and i think maybe just added to that if you had this magic wand in south africa today how would you actually change the situation and that's a loaded question mm -hmm. yeah. i think nothing nothing has happened to me yet I say yes because um, I feel like as women in corporate and when you want to move up the ladder, there's so many yeah. different decisions that you have to make. Absolutely. And the only reason I said yes is because I don't have a child yet. Yes. So I have a level of privilege that someone who has a child doesn't have, you know, and I feel like when we are in corporate, you, you're told to work really hard, you stay up late, you're working all these hectic hours that the thought of even having a child gets so scary. Yes. Like, I, I just, I, I was, I, yes, um, I, I was recently appointed as part of the young board at work, and it's going to be a one year, we're going to have one term, and it's going to end next year. And the first thing I thought about, I was like, oh my gosh, I can't get pregnant. Yes. Because if I get pregnant, that will like it will affect so many other things, yes. and I'm like, it's so weird that I have to think about yeah. that, and and that is that is a life choice for me. So I feel like there's so many mechanisms in corporate that need to change and yes. cater for women to make helpful decisions that will make them grow. I mean, when we were talking with Molo, where Google offers. As part of being a woman, your eggs get frozen. Yeah. <laughs> so you don't have to think about it. Yeah. You, know, you don't have to say, oh my gosh, time's running out. I need to do this. No, your, your eggs will get frozen. You need to make that decision. If you want to make that decision, make that decision. You know? But it releases a, a certain amount of stress on you because you're like, okay, then I can concentrate on this thing and I don't have to worry about this other thing. Mm. So I think there's there's varying degrees. I was yeah. actually listening to a lady that was interviewed yesterday on the radio. She's a miner. Yeah. She works in the mines. Mm. And she talks about how difficult it is for them when it comes to the time of the month. Mm. As a yes. woman. And they were not given the appropriate PPE yeah. and clothing mm. because, as women. And it's yeah. only now that they get to that stage. But you know how it is with the top of month for a yeah. lady. Yeah, yeah, you can't say nothing. You can't say nothing. You can't say You can't say nothing. 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 You can't say
whole thing is that I wish I wish more men would actually be part of this discussion. More men would actually engage with us because if you do that, if you actually have more men as part of this discussion, yes. men start to understand exactly what it is that you're putting out there, what it is that you're saying to them, mm-hmm. and and it's um, you know what what do you experience again, women? tend to take on this burden of wanting to change, make change. Mm-hmm. Whereas a man, especially in corporate, has the privilege yes. of not having to think about the thing you want to do. Uh, and then, so they need it, you know. Yeah. And then it's been never affected because when I think about my team, um, the men have children, yeah. the women don't. Yeah. Yeah. Like, all the guys are dads. Like they, they their lives are, it's, it's moving normally, so yeah. they don't, well, it, it, it yeah. never occurs to them that this is a really stressful work environment. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. But I, I, I think what we are finding out is that even though they've got all these dads and they're there and it's a stressful environment, when the meeting runs over, they just pick up the phone and say, we're going to be late. Yeah. When there's a mom in the situation mm-hmm. and she's, and things are running over, what happens is, I'm sorry, I'm, you know, it's going to be really difficult. I can't make the meeting because I don't have somebody to babysit. I'm still going to go there so and yes. so on. So it does become a very different yes. conversation. Um, and then it's sort of negatively. Absolutely. Yes. You know, absolutely. It's acceptable. And yeah. I don't know if you want to do this. Bus, you know, yeah. You mm-hmm. just sort out your, you can't bring your, yeah. your house to the office. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but I do think that as, as, as female CEOs and as female executives, we have to change that. Um, mm-hmm. Like I look at the fact that when I... Um, was the head of, of, of the organization I gave leadership to. One of the things I would say to a lot of the ladies who were there, like, you do you do you need the option of having to bring your kid to this event, you know, mm-hmm. because you don't have a babysitter? Mm-hmm. Do we need to consider, like, hiring a babysitter to be with the kids in a room somewhere so that you can mm-hmm. comfortably be at this event without being concerned about it? And, yes, a lot, I mean, some of the women never, you know, we had, you, you're so used to having that kind of, support system that allows you to to have these you know um, these events in the evening but i know for myself if i didn't have my support system of of, of having my mom and dad around and my nieces and nephews i would struggle to attend events in the afternoon mm-hmm. the evening, you know but yeah. um i think it is up to us as well exactly what the point was that those of us who do have a level of privilege and entitlement mm-hmm. really need to initiate the change we need to be sitting putting ourselves in that situation and initiating the change and, and not having the people, in this case my staff, coming to me and saying, can you do this, but rather for me to start initiating. But I think also, if I can add on that, well, I'm just sitting there and thinking that if you have a, a woman-led organization and that person doesn't have kids, yeah. you know, they're not married and they're very driven, they're focusing on, on, on yeah. their career, they, you sometimes find that they less understanding yeah. of those, mm. yeah, of and those yet challenges. they are women. Mm. You know, don't bring that yeah. here. Don't yeah. bring me that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. running a business. They more focus on numbers. Yeah. Yeah. you know, I, I don't have time for those conversations. And in some organizations, you will find men that are much more engaging yeah. around those things. Let's have a daycare facility within the office space. Let's have. Uh, uh, maybe taxi service yeah. available mm-hmm. for you to get home in the evening. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They work around you as a mom mm-hmm. and it's men owned. Absolutely. And then where do you then draw the line? Because you have female that are not. Yeah. Yeah. So I was just going to say, I worked for the two NGOs that I've worked with, we've been child friendly. Um, with the one that was in the policy, if you had a kid, mm-hmm. if, she was, if the kid was young, you were able to bring the child. But then there were other employees that could always make a fuss about it. Mm. And I mean, we service with this 41 within our policy. Yes. I mean, we know as women, well, not me, not a parent yet, but you know, like um, being able to bring the child to work mm. and, you know, making the child part of your work environment makes it easy because you know your kid is here safe mm. and so forth. But then the other employees would make a big deal about the fact actually being a child, yeah. a child crying, a child saying that. Yeah. So mm. sometimes we ourselves are also the problem. In case, yes. Instead of being like, Let's be supportive, let's rather be. Yes. Yeah. 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 On, this, on this issue of, of privilege and entitlement, I, you know, I know there's a lot of the ladies who were supposed to be part of this discussion that for circumstances sort of said, you know, sorry, we can't make it. But there were one or two ladies that said, but it's just like, no way that I would participate in a discussion like that, you know, sort of live and, and have it recorded. But, you know, 
I also find that you, you, the attitude of some people who do find themselves in an entitled, privileged position are going like, oh, come on, when are you going to get over this? You know, when are you going to yes. move on from yes. this? You know, like, it's done now. It's in the past. It's, you know, it's, we can't help the fact that we sit in a situation of privilege. I mean, the person will just tell me how does that make you feel because I know how that makes me feel. Just, um, Shani, you know, you're sitting with friends and they're going like, oh, come on, get over it. You know, just... That doesn't really happen to me because my friend group's not really like that. Um, but when I hear about stuff like that, it does actually make me quite angry because yes, it's over for you. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. the past for you. Yeah. But what about the rest of us? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You yeah. can't lump us all into it's over because it's not over yeah. for everyone. Yes. Yeah. It's like those abusive men that say, I abused you, but I still love you. You know, like, it's, it's over now. I, you know, I beat you up for five minutes and we're done. You know, I've, I've like, emotionally abused you for five minutes. It's done now. Come into the conversation. It's going to go on for years and generations. Yes. So change will reshape itself as it goes mm -hmm. along. It's not necessarily going to be about race yeah. or gender yeah. and things yeah. like that. Yeah. It's the circumstances and whatever you, however you, you know, wherever you find yourself. Yeah, true. That's that's so, a great point. Yeah. Because now I'm thinking my kids will not have the problems that I have because my my kids will have the privilege of having a professional parent. Which means they'll go to particular schools, they'll be um, exposed to particular things, but they'll still there'll, there'll still be an issue. I don't know what that issue yeah. might be yes. but there would still be Yeah. 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 And, and what I'm finding is that usually people who are the ones that are saying get over it and you know move along mm. are not the ones that have taken the opportunity of privilege and entitlement mm. to mm. do the good. Okay. You know, those are usually the ones that are just that I don't know, maybe just labored by guilt, I guess. Mm. Um or just refuse to acknowledge it. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Refuse to acknowledge that they they have, they're there, they can do it. Yeah. You know, there are a lot of people that sort of suppress it and want to move on and take the next step and yeah. act like it's not there. Yeah. Yeah. The thing about accepting your privilege is you have to accept that you didn't work as hard as a person who didn't grow up in a particular family of a particular race or you had it somewhat easy. So questions, like people take it as Maybe my success wasn't like completely by my doing. Yes. So, mm -hmm. so that's where it comes in. Way accepting your privilege says um, because you are of you grew up, you were born a certain way, and you were born of a certain economic class. You but you were exposed to a lot more opportunities, and therefore you are. And people want to believe I worked really, 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 really hard for this, mm -hmm. and yeah. that's how I got to where I am. Mm -hmm. You know. So it questions everything about them yeah. because mm -hmm. you you literally say to them a lot of what you got, dude, oh guy, mm -hmm. is because of the fact that you're male. Mm -hmm. and, you know, you walked into the room and people assist you in a certain way. I always say this: when you're the only female on the board you don't even sometimes recognize that you are representing your gender because mm -hmm. every stereotype is any individual around the table has of your gender is either confirmed by your behavior or dispelled by your behavior and that is extremely i mean that's an incredible mm -hmm. amount of pressure why do they always think men up we need to say women yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> or you eat like a girl you yeah. don't yeah. try like a girl so yeah so i, I think it's also the fact that it's also it's it's entrenched in everything. It's entrenched in our language. This privilege and entitlement is entrenched in our language. It's entrenched in our in our daily experiences. I mean, if you scratch enough, you will come up with five or six examples of where you were not um, you were not part of that privileged or entitled few. But I, but I also am going to come back to the fact that when people then start talking to you about get over it, it's mm. you know it's done and dusted. I don't think that they, it's exactly Lynn's comment, it's the stuff that you were not subjected to. Mm -hmm. So you don't understand the impact of it. We can always talk about this um, a topic, I and mean, it means sociology, I don't remember what the other was, but it was in the undergrad. We came across this um, academic piece written by Peggy McIntosh, it's a name, and it's called White Privilege Unpacking the Invisible Knapsack. And then last night in bed, I was just like scrolling through, and she kind of lists all the things that 
why people are sort of ignorant to this kind of privileges that they, that they have. So like one of them was like you could walk down the street and you, you wouldn't be arrested. Mm. You know, we, for some of us, for people of color, we know we walk down the street, like, oh, you, I think I even whistled at or yeah. yes. yes. you know, yes. you're looking like that and you're just like, you know, we yeah. are. So, I mean, it's it's a good piece to read and, and um, yeah, it was interesting to see all the things that you kind of read in that moment and you said so true. I experienced something so much different than I actually had a, an incident about two weeks back and I felt so much freedom after I had actually just took a decision to stand my ground and say, look, I had been approached by two other guys running their own business and they had the doctorate, so they put the DR before yeah. my names and I don't have that before yeah. my name, but I'm also qualified in our yeah. space. Yeah. And we had to partner on this project and I had to uh, occupy 80% of the work had to come from my own business. Right? There was this, I was constantly undermined. Yeah. I was constantly undermined. I felt as if I'm being taken on as an employee. And I felt that I needed to prove who I am. And the first email that was okay, and I could hear the tone, but I chose to, I chose my visa as professional or respondent. And the second time it happened, and I'm thinking, I, I'm not making up things. This is yeah. just mm. utterly rude. And then I just sit to opinion from other people, and they said, oh, this tone is not okay. Again, I said, okay, let me go respond and just. And then we had a one on one just to maybe see if the approach is different and the result is better. And the third time it happened, and then I said, uh uh-huh. mm-hmm. You know, and I sent a very professional email back. And I said, I would love to be excused from this project. And then the people came and I had a conversation and I said to them, I said, we don't do that. You know, I felt so belittled and undermined in every aspect. And I needed to choose my needs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I might not have what you have, but you need me to push this project. Yeah. And in the absence of me, you're not going to be able to push it. But anything that is going to undermine my gift, and my abilities and my visa. I said I'm not gonna, you know, compromise that. And it talks to what you said because for them they might have grown in a space. And I see that. Yeah. You know, they might not be white or kind yeah. but they grew up in that setup. Oh. You know, and there's this thinking that this is who we are. Yeah. And I said, I'm 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 protecting my visa. Yeah. Oh. I, I think I'm that- choosing my visa and I, I felt this freedom after doing that. Mm-hmm. And I think that's exactly what we're talking about. It's we're talking about sort of stopping the bus and having the conversations with those who do have this level of entitlement mm-hmm. and just and privilege and, and saying to them, let me educate you on how it makes mm-hmm. you feel. Let me tell mm-hmm. you why it's not acceptable. Let me mm-hmm. tell you why I choose not to be in your company mm-hmm. because this is how... And so, you know, I mean, you sit and you listen to Chanel's example, you know, her experience, and you think, wow, that is extremely brave. But I think even in the work environment, it's an incredibly brave thing to do because you immediately start thinking of, oh, my word, the consequences of this is I may lose this contract. Mm-hmm. I may um, have to say goodbye to this client. But mm-hmm. but I'm finding that we are getting stronger. We are yes. starting to feel that as women, that we don't have to subject ourselves to mm-hmm. this um, you know, there's mm-hmm. yes. yes. You don't have to put into this mold of of we sit back and we we take it and we you know we you can it's okay for you to abuse us. Actually, we are finding our voices and we are finding our way to say this is unacceptable. This is not okay. Because by sitting back, you actually lose yourself without even mm-hmm. realizing it. Mm-hmm. You you lose yourself. Yeah. You lose a part of you every time you. Just it's, it's okay. Yeah. And then five years later, you have to go through on some program to try and rediscover. <laughs> yes. Because you lost yourself in that silence, you know. Mm-hmm. And Your psychologist like, is and that's what I tell my daughter as well, because she just got a book. She's doing a final in varsity and she's in a corporate space as an office administrator. And I, and I, and I talked to her about this stuff. Because I don't want her to get into that track where. Only at the age of 40, she starts standing up for herself. And, mm. But now she was just 
when something is not going well, have the conversation yes. in that way you're going to transform your box. Yeah. Transform mm -hmm. your box to the workspace because she's the only African person in the office. And still so, that's the point of workspace is why does it have to transformation have to take place in the bottom of I don't yes. know. So it needs to happen at the top. Yes. Apart from diversity and inclusion mm -hmm. as a conversation, yes. privilege and entitlement should be put Absolutely. out there and happen. And then people there at the top should understand that you know you need to understand where everybody in your in your business is coming from and every person that works for you. You want their journey to get there. That is mm -hmm. such an important point. Uh, and I think we're going to get to that point. We are going to get to that point where businesses are going to have to say it's not just about diversity and inclusion. Yeah. And, and, you know, trainers and facilitators are going to have to start looking at this issue of entitlement and privilege because it's mm. equally destructive. Mm. Um, yes. But, yeah, we, 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 at the end of our discussion, I just want to ask you ladies to just take a second to think of, you know, are there any closing thoughts that you, that you would like to just leave with our audience today? Um, on this on this very very interesting topic. Well, um, in closing, I think it's important for us, as starting in this room, that we identify our privileges and speak up for people who don't have those privileges, and who are un underprivileged in those aspects that we are privileged in. Mm -hmm. So it's 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 important for us to stand up for those people yes. because we have the platforms, our voices are loud in those aspects, so we should use them. Absolutely. Wow. Okay. I think I think for me, um, if if people still have a question with regards to whether they are privileged or not privileged, they because I, I, I there was a book that I was reading um, and it quoted something by Gloria Steinem and she said that um, the powerful take on the noun and the less powerful will take on the adjective. So if you think, if I say CEO, you, you immediately think of a man. Yeah, yeah. But if I say female CEO, I have to describe yes. you know, because we are less powerful. And that's privilege. You know? sure. So we need to get to a point where so I can yeah. say, I can just say neuroscientist. Yes. And you won't, to attach a gender. you won't attach a gender to it. So I think, I think we need to really dig deep and have empathy. I think a lot of the work requires us to have empathy for people and to be willing to actually understand the stories that they have in order to to actually drive that change. In order for me to be empathetic to homosexual people, I have to understand the struggles that they have yes. and I have to be open to actually having brave conversations with them. So I think in closing, I, I would encourage us to have conversations, yeah. real conversations okay. with people, okay. and understand who people are and, and, and what they bring to the table. Thank you so much. That's awesome. I think we have to end the cycle where privilege and entitlement um, results in oppression. You know, so let's stop that right now. Like more or less, say, be the voice of the voiceless and be the change you want to see in society. Mm. You know? Okay, great. I think for me, I'll go with what you said, that just, I find that there's so much that happens when you start understanding people. You know, I don't, I don't honestly believe that people do things because they're bored. Yeah. You know, something must have happened to drive that behavior. And if you take the time to engage that, then you find there's actually something far deeper than what you see on the surface, you know. So we really just got to spend some time and be authentic in our conversations. Yeah. With people, you know, don't don't look at diversity, inclusiveness, and entitlement and privilege as just words. Mm -hmm. But what does it really mean? Yeah, because I think now it's like a word game. Yeah, mm -hmm. playing around with words and just mm -hmm. throwing words at each other. Yeah. But nobody actually understands at the core what that means. And, Absolutely. And what is my responsibility in that? And on what you said about female, see women. Like we talk about women on businesses. What yes. For that? Yes. 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 And we do that. Yes. We do it. As women. Yes. Yeah. Like, because we've been sucked into that. Yeah. We are. Yeah. Yeah. So women on business. Really? Yeah. It's just college yeah. 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 So that's why. Yeah. That's such a good. And she needs a lot to say. I think what we take away from this is knowledge. Yes. So we've got, you know, oh, every, co everything we've said, if we've got the knowledge, we need to share mm -hmm. the knowledge. And I think that's important, no matter what it is that we do. 
other thing is that clay fields are never going to be level unless you do that yes. ourselves. Yes, we start planting those little blades of grass ourselves mm -hmm. and we make those level playing fields. So that's privileged and title in this conversation. 50 years from now, yeah, hopefully it's not happening. Mm -hmm. um, Shania, I know you have a poem that we've asked you to read as part of your conclusion. I just want to say thank you so much. This, you know, every time I start these things, come up with this idea of let's, let's have a discussion on that. I walk away from the discussion with you ladies so absolutely encouraged and inspired and so much more knowledgeable. And I know one of the things that we're trying to push is that the, you know, sort of thing, you know, once we have a few more of these conversations, just to put a book together of inspirational quotes that come out of these discussions. And I mean, I just know that there are some points that came out of our discussion today that are going to be absolutely featured because a lot of what you all have said has just like struck a chord with me and made me think so much about my own behavior mm -hmm. and my own, you know, the things that I should be, how I should be doing things differently. And unfortunately, okay. our context may so call for us to refer to it as women owned businesses, but at least allow me to start educating people about how that is no longer acceptable, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so, yeah, thank you. I'm going to ask you to read your poem and then um, I'll do one or two final words. So the poem is written by my best friend, Kirsten Dawkins, and she actually won a poetry competition with this poem. Um, it's titled White Privilege. White Privilege is smiling at me. I tell her there's something in her teeth. She asks what exactly I mean by that. White Privilege holds out the hand. She says she can cross bridges where I can't, drips sardonic smiles and apologies. White Privilege asks why my kind do not have to mind her hair rules. White Privilege thinks she is right. She wonders why I'm allowed to be proud, why I have to be so loud. What rights do I have to her space? White Privilege asks a question. She does not raise her hand, but hardly needs to. You could not miss her voice. She asks why it's fair that I can call that I can call her that. Why is white privilege what is white privilege supposed to mean anyway? How is it different, she wants to know, than the slurs that drip from her grandfather's throat? White privilege does not mean it, but she is allowed to be ignorant. When brown, when brown skin holds your organs, you are a natural born educator. It is your job to tell her she is wrong. She could never learn for herself, could she? White privilege is offended by my poetry. She asks what makes my words, born from her spanning a generation or five, acceptable. She asks why she is not allowed to say the same things about my ancestors. White privilege moves to Australia on an expedited visa. She does not remember my name or look me in the eye when she comes home to tell me I am wrong, to live where I belong. White Privilege asks questions with no interval, does not stop for me to answer, is content to be better than appears simply for asking. Never mind, she does not wait to hear what I can say. White Privilege walks her halls with me in my faded school dress. She laughs with me, calls me friend to my face, but goes home and tells her father my race. That is awesome and very deep. It's no, good. No, that last yeah. one. <laughs> yeah, that last one is amazing. We can all find something in there. Please pass out um, congratulations on a beautiful piece of poetry to Krista. Kirsten. 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 Please pass it on oh. to us. That's a beautiful piece of poetry. I think it just raises a whole lot of issues that we didn't have the time to discuss today. But ladies, thank you for being here today. It was, again, absolutely inspiring and I, I really hope that it inspires us to bring change. Thank you.